In this video, I'm going to open up a new model, which I've already done, to show you how to set up basic grids and bring in a external reference model, uh, which I'm going to use to trace the job that I'm drawing. This is actually going to be a live job. So when you open up a new model, this is your basic view that you get up. No real reference points in there to work to. All you've got is your UCS icon on this green box. First thing you want to be doing is seeing your grids. So how do you do that? Uh, if you go into your view, by the way, this is version 18. So in later versions, accessing these commands that I'm going to be going through will be in different places. So create a view on the model along grid lines. Create grids okay so as you can see it's now created all these grids there's a grid already preset up by Tecla so first thing I do is I open grid at zero and double click on your grid and that will bring this box up and then you just change all your values by changing these values here so these are in your X direction, these will have to be your A, B, C, Ds. Uh, your Y directions, your 1, 2, 3, and your, your Z coordinate. Uh, so that's your levels, basically. Uh, and, that, and these you fill in, put in whatever you want to correspond. This actual model is not going to have any grids in it, it's just going to have a simple X, Y, Z grid. Before I... Uh, remove all these grids. A little tip for manually manipulating your grid. For instance, if one elevation is not perpendicular to the rest of the grid, you're going to want to put in a sloping grid. So how do you do that? You can't select a grid in your standard selection mode. So find your select a grid line tab and then when you do that you can select individual grids or pairs of individual grids. So what you would do is highlight your grid. If you hold your alt button down and drop a window around one, one grid or the other and move, you can stretch grids around like that. You can add a single grid. Uh, so for instance, um, add a grid line. Pick an object and pick a point and pick a second point uh, and that's as simple as that I'm not going to get into radial grids I never of course do one so I'm not really best qualified to do a quick tutorial however I'm sure I can get me around if I needed to so I'm just going to undo that put it back to standard selection tools as you can see here, look, and before I delete everything, that's got a value of 2 star 4000. That's basically telling me that these two grids are 4 metres apart. So if I just change that to a 4 and modify, do you want to change? Yes. Fit work area to entire model. As you can see, it's extended of the grid. And then you just add on E. And modify yes right so that's pretty much grids done as you can see it's set up all these defaults if I were to modify any of these so for instance the levels uh, no we don't want to we don't want to sub level we'll make that 3000 uh, make that 6,000, 10,000. So you've got your A, B, C, D, E, F, and you've got your 1, 2, 3, uh, 3,000 in there. That needs another grid reference, 4. And then these levels here need to be replicated here. So that to be plus 0, plus 3, 500. Or for the sake of it, uh, call it 
plus 6.0 plus 10.0. So highlight the grid, modify, save changes, yes. Okay, so these grid references here are now are no longer applicable. Well, the next thing that I would do is this view here render get rid of it don't want it it's no use to me it's got no grid references on so if I'm looking at a model actually I've just deleted the zero reference and I wanted to keep that so create a basic view of the model create okay so assuming that I'd not deleted the uh, zero level this is a replication of that basically first thing I would do is change that the view that was named plus zero I'll change that to isometric change that to a depth which is more in keeping with my model so I'll give it plus a thousand so plus my highest level is ten thousand and I'll give it minus a thousand oops and I'll give that a thousand down below zero and then modify that view that now becomes my default 3d view Tekla's default 3d view doesn't have the grid in so it can be a bit of a pain trying to work out the orientation of your model when you are toggling uh, between the isometric and plan view of that if you want to see a full depth view on your isometric view you just press ctrl p and it just keep it in ctrl p and it will toggle between an isometric and an ortho view uh, okay so that's our isometric view set up so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to delete all these views that's all the default views that Tetra set up. I'm going to delete those. I'll right click on my grid, create a view along grid lines, create. You now have a completely new set of grid views set up. Okay, so grid set up. Let's lose these. As I was saying, for this job, there are no grid references so I'm just going to set all these to zero 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 I specialize in secondary steel so a lot of the time grids aren't really relevant x y z modify change yes okay for this job I have This is some client's information. Uh, it's just a bit of railing on, on a parapet wall and some steps. There's lots of locks in this drawing and there's lots of layers in this drawing. If I try and import that into my Tekla model, uh, it will probably fail. So what I tend to do is I, I create a new DWG from, from blank and then I copy from the client's drawing what the information that I need, turn layers off, clean up whatever you want, select it and copy and paste it into a new session. Which is what I've done here. I've moved it around, lined these up, align these up, uh, and I'm going to bring that entire bit of information in. Um, on more complex jobs, I'll probably create a separate DWG from each one. And what you tend to find with uh, importing reference models as DWGs is sometimes they just fail they don't come in uh, and usually it's it's all down to blocks external references that the uh, original uh, architect or engineer has used uh, just basically uh, convoluted with information that Tekla don't like to read so if you if you explode all your blocks that's a good way of getting DWGs coming to your technical model and another good thing to do is to purge 
the information that you've copied in. Uh, this way you're preserving your, your client's drawing, but you've got more control. You've got a simpler set of information to come in. So we hit your purge command and you'll get a prompt to purge all and it'll just purge all items and just keep just keep repeating that until it stops probably get two or three times it'll ask you to do that that's it it's finished once that goes grey it's finished Okay, do a save on that. And back into our Tecla model. Now bringing the reference model. And the way to do this, I, I actually have an icon for importing a reference model. Uh, but uh, we'll do it along that way. Reference model list. And insert a reference model. Accept the default, uh, and you can leave that in there for the time being. That will probably change, but I'll get into that in a second. So, don't apply anything, just click. Display, make sure that's ticked on. Modify. And as you can see, that is your default reference model. And it's highlighted up in this list. I'm going to browse to that reference model and modify. From there, I can see that it's successfully come in. However, if I zoom out, there's no sign of that model. So First thing we're going to do is work, fit work area to entire model. And basically what it's done is it's come in at a huge, huge scale. There's a start of your grid there, look. And as you can see, it's woefully out of scale. This is to do with this. So you scale one to one. What you find a lot with AutoCAD drawings is they actually come in in an imperial scale. So you have to type in a value which will then convert it from that imperial scale to a metric scale. And that value is 0 0.039 7401. Now, Tekla won't read all those values, but I just put it in because if you convert from Imperial to Metric, that is the sum that will come up on your calculator. So don't hit subdivide or anything, just click modify, highlight your model, and click modify. As you can see, refit to work area. And as you can see, that now looks more to scale. Control P. Bring it round uh, quickly. You've got some dimensions there. Uh, just drop your own dimension on. 1500. Ready to go here. Uh, and I'm going to align move, move special linear. And we're going to have the top parapet wall as. My level zero. Hmm, no section on this. Do we have a section? Landed. Yes, we do. So we're going to put the landing level there. So that's going to be our zero. Move. Uh, once you've brought these in, 
they might not be in the orientation that you're expecting to see so for instance that's an elevation um, for more complex models as I've said before I would create a separate reference model for plan view and elevation uh, descend elevation here etc this is quite a simple one so all I'm going to do is I'm going to move this reference model around as I need to uh, and you can move it just using your basic tecla move and copy tools so I'm going to move this move special and I'm going to rotate it rather than rotate it through Z axis I'm going to rotate it through a line so pick pick a line and we don't want to flip it upside down let's give it a minus 90 it could be 90 we want if we flip it one way or another uh, so it's, that's gone upside down so just hit it again hit it again and it's now in the right elevation and that is set up for me to go um, again I'm going to delete these don't need these anymore Create the on grid. Create. I want the Y plane. Which is the entire work area. Give that some depth. And switch on. Uh, right okay so I can't actually see the reference model why is that um, short answer is I don't really know but what I have found is if you bring up your reference model list and do a redraw roll it, that seems to regenerate it uh, use fit work area using two parts drop it around it and I can see the entire reference model and that is now ready for me to start doing my solid model if I just go back into uh, my isometric view to toggle the different views you don't need to go into this window and doing it that way uh, quick way to do it is just do control tap on your keyboard and I'll scroll through as many views as you've got open up to nine views what I want to do now is set up the, the plan view as well. So I'm going to do a copy special linear and copy it onto itself. Okay. So if I bring back up my reference model list, you can now see that there's two models both named exactly the same. So if I select one of them, move special rotate rotate it around the same position again around the line and let's put 19 this time and move is now that's the wrong way around so it's done again and again that is the view that I want so I'm wanting to look at this plan view here um, Control P and then I'm going to move that view over and pick any point on a muscle. We'll put center of my balustrade on the time. So move special linear. A bit slow dragging when it's got reference models. linear and that's the y direction so turn that tick off and move that shut that down shut that down that and that uh, control p and i now have two models so if i'm in this view i can see the elevation here and if i'm in my plan view i can work on the width a bit and that's pretty much grids and reference models in the simplest form. Thanks for watching.